Hey boys and girls, welcome to today, May 1st, Texas Fly Fishing Report. As you know, I am the only person that provides an ongoing fishing report based on conventional fly fishing. Kind of lets me know what's going on throughout Texas. That is the scroll at the end provided by your folks at Texas Parks and Wildlife Department. So you can always fast forward to the scroll and slow that down. But what I want to do today is start with a little uh, um, plug for Smith Optics. And there's a reason for that and we'll lead into it right as the report gets started. Smith Optics are really good sunglasses, polarized is what you want. Um, and I have several colors that I use of lenses based on basically the kind of water I fish, what my eyes respond to, which your eyes may be different, but this is how I see it with my eyes. And I've been using my eyes professionally since 1988 as a professional photographer. And so they're very, my eyes are very important to me, of course, um, on an ongoing basis. And now uh, I use them to sight cast for carp, among other things in shallow waters and so it's really good to have glasses that penetrate without giving that ambient reflection on top of the water so let me start with just my driving glasses to get me to the lake or maybe even a river um, and being on the road i choose to use the most uh, neutral dark gray uh, lens that uh, smith makes just kind of a plain pair of glasses uh, that cut as much light as possible and of course are polarized to prevent reflective light from reflecting off of uh, whatever's out in front whether it's a piece of chrome or whatever um, so dark grays are what i choose um, they're not variables or anything like that and that's my driving glasses right there smith now of course these are freshwater lenses that i'm showing you the saltwater lenses lead lean towards blue um, but these are freshwater mostly and shallow skinny uh, bay texas bay salt water so the darkest lens i use on the brightest days is the green love my greens a lot of people don't think about greens for my eyes and the way i see color and light these greens with polarized polarized green and green reflective they've been killer both on salt, shallow salt, and in fresh water here in um, North Texas, where I'm based. But uh, as conditions deteriorate, which they are extremely deteriorated right now, I have to change my lens colors to, to gather more light, to let more light in and offset the gray days that we're having right now on May 1st. The next step down would be basically this lens right here which is copper <clears throat> copper is a good lens for muddy shallow for low light and the only thing i don't like about that lens for me is that it gathers so much light that if the sun does come out it's almost blinding to your eyes it just lets too much sun in so if that happens back to the greens i'll carry all these on the boat so that i can have uh, the ability to make changes now the lightest in early morning light and like stream overcast like this is today's lens actually um, is this right here and this is the rose chroma pop these chroma pops are pretty spectacular glasses um, on a day like this it just turns everything into a crispy sharp uh, very finely detailed bright uh, objects through the glasses so they're great for penetrating on overcast and things like super overcast and things like that they allow the most light in <coughs> about the same as the copper but they definitely are for this kind of lighting situation so now on to thank you smith optics now on to this texas fly fishing report i try to start hyper local right here in north texas i'm in denton texas 30 miles north of dallas fort worth if you're ready to get your guide on, it's time to book it. But for now, I wouldn't take you out because it's so overcast, you can't see the fish. And um, they're out there, but they're hard to find, hard, hard to spot. And now the lakes 
are above conservation pool. So check your lakes, they're gonna be above pool. That's a problem because what happens is you know, the bass are great because they don't do what do what carp do. Carp work their way into shallow, shallow grass and under trees and things like that. Very hard to approach, very hard to stick. And if you do stick one, they're gonna wrap you around. They're, they're very, very, very smart when it comes to wrapping you around things. Um, so this is particular to bass. I mean, excuse me, particular to carp. And particular to bass, they're really just all over the place right now. Um, but let's just go back to the general residual effect of all this rain we're having right now in North Texas region, and really kind of Central Texas too. That leads to lakes that are full. That leads to another wonderful phenomenon um, that doesn't happen up here anymore because the, the river's been ruined by log jams here in Denton, Texas and over here at Trinity River between Louisville and Ray Roberts. Totally ruined. Um, but other rivers will have releases and there's been some great releases going on down at Possum Kingdom Dam, for example. And as these, as these, what we are is we're about a month behind in the seasons now. So this should have been happening at the beginning of April. Now it happens at the beginning of May. It's kind of a pain in the butt because when you keep on a 12 year, 13 year calendar like I have, things don't match up very well. But um, we usually get about a week of rain, um, usually earlier in the year, but this is the time, this is the place, and we've got the rain. So Ray Roberts Dam is open, doesn't mean anything. Uh, don't waste your time. Uh, but if you can get to Possum Kingdom and they've shut off the bow, uh, you want to go there and fish this week, weekdays, very good. I also had a report from a guy that's fishing on Lake Whitney proper, fly fishing, and he is just, just scoring, racking up the uh, schoolie size uh, stripers. So I'm not sure where he's going. And he was off during the weekdays this past week because he has an out, outside job. So he got some time off and went and did that. So there's a phenomenon that happened. The lakes are gonna be fluctuating a lot right now as they try to draw them down in case there's more rain, which maybe there will be, maybe there won't be, who knows. But um, that's what's going on in North Texas. Now, as you look at these other reports, you'll see that this fresh water does make it to the coast. It does affect the salinity right now. Um, it's not super critical. You know, we're still recovering from the freeze and that freeze has inspired me to inspire you to catch and release only for the rest of this year. Redfish were less affected. Speckled trout, don't even keep a trout. Just forget about it. Let them rest, give them the rest of the year to recover and, and grow and then we'll get back at it next year because uh, we will never actually know the actual number of speckled trout that were killed by the freeze, ever. We'll have an estimate, but it could be off by a million or two, one direction or another. Um, it was it was a bad freeze. So that's on the coast. Of course, the rivers, there's no reporting from the rivers, except if I go to them, the closest viable river is a long ways from here. So as far as something that has game fish in it and that is uh, uh, worth going to. So it's hard. But um, if you are on the Brazos River and you need company, give me a holler. I'm ready to try out. Um, my my hand at some river fly fishing and I did that last weekend you saw that video if you haven't seen it go back and look at that it's kind of boring <laughs> but it's better than nothing um, but that's what's going on guys here comes a scroll make sure you like and subscribe and drop me a text message at 940-380-0408 and I'll add you to my alerts I don't do anything with that number other than send out alerts for um, hot spots and where to go fly fishing. My recommendations that come into me from you a lot of times. I don't get to go all over Texas at once. It's way too big a state. So those recommendations will come from you guys. You send them to me and then from there I spread those out um, well, over a, an elite group of people. Not about, it's not spreading them out about thousands of people. It's about probably up to about a dozen now. So, uh, and those guys, I'd say 10 out of 12 of a dozen won't make it. So it's just the way it goes, but it's good to be able to share and commune that way with information. 
Thanks for watching. Here comes the scroll. Make sure you like and subscribe to Texas Flycaster. Visit the website www.texasflycaster.com today because there's a lot of written information there. Make sure you check out Lone Star Outdoor News for my articles from time to time. And uh, if you got any ideas about where to go and what to do, you know how to get a hold of me. 940-380-0408. Thanks for watching, guys. See you soon.